Hey guys, I'm back in Kelowna. I've been back for about a week and a half, and today is going to be the last video in the series of videos that I filmed in Hemingford, Quebec at La Ferme de Cap de Tap. Now, unfortunately, we just couldn't find time to make more videos with JM, Jean Martin. He was so busy, so maxed out, that um, I ended up interviewing some other great people that I think you should know about. And today I'm bringing you Carrie Fox of Green Sister Gardens from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada. And I've known Carrie for a long time and I've seen her farm progress from the beginning to where it is today. I met her, I think it was six or seven years ago at some of the early workshops, or one of the early workshops I taught in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, I've kind of watched her progress. Anyways, she came to Hemingford to the workshop with myself and JM, and she took a week off in the middle of the season, which is pretty intense, but Carrie runs a very cool urban farm, pedal-powered urban farm, very small, like around a quarter acre, just like mine, does a lot of the same types of crops. So I thought I'd bring you somebody who's doing something awesome, and it's very similar to mine. So can this model work with other people? Yeah, it can. Check out Carrie Fox, we'll get into that in a second. I just wanna say one quick thing. My next YouTube live session is this Friday coming up. So Friday, this Friday, just come to the channel. You'll see the video at the front of the channel. Just click in and 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'll be answering your guys' questions. I hope to see you there. All right, let's get into it. All right, Carrie, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm, um, I'm stoked that we finally get to do an interview because we've known each other for quite a while. Yeah. And I've watched you from beginning to where you are now. So could you tell tell everybody kind of like what Green Sister Gardens is all about in a nutshell? Um, Green Sister Gardens is a urban farm in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Um, I grow in a style uh, similar to you. I mean, that's who I've been. I've been following your style and your pattern for a number of years. Yeah. Um, we sell to farmers markets, local restaurants in uh, Regina, which is close by. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know what else I should say about that. <laughs> how, how is the, um, so how big is the farm now compared to when you started? Well, when I started, honestly, I started too big. Um, I started with just under a quarter of an acre, which was too much for me to learn on. But, yeah. I mean, that's pretty typical. Yeah. Um, right now I'm at a quarter of an acre and I have an 1100 square foot indoor space that I grow in. For microgreens in your nursery and yeah. stuff like that? Yep. Yeah. 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 So that includes a 45 foot greenhouse grow tomatoes and basil and stuff like that in. Yep, okay, and um, what are your best market streams right now? Has that changed since you started? Oh, for sure. Like, I just started with the farmer's markets. Um, it's been gradually changing to restaurants, so I would say I'm probably a little bit more than 50% now with, with my restaurant clients. So that's really increased. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when when you started, you did it full on pedal power, just like I did. How 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 much of that are you still doing? I would say, hmm, I would say we do about 40% pedal powered still. Yeah. Yeah. And that is that just because it's easy to do? The gardens are close to one another yeah. and... Yeah, we're just managing our time, you know, so it's the gardens that are closer to my house. I want to do as much as I possibly can, but I'm just yeah. trying to be realistic about it, so... You have to be. Yeah. yeah. And do you, do you still enjoy that part of it? Oh, I love doing that Doing it that way? I know it's yeah, fun, hey? Yeah, for sure. And it keeps me in shape. And yeah. Yeah, it feels good. I know. The older we get, it's like we have to maintain... Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> You need to find excuses to, to move, uh, and, move and get yeah. exercise. I know, like, I'm... <laughs> Man, I don't, I don't, I used to think I used to bike like 10,000 kilometers a year and I'm yeah. probably not even a quarter of that anymore. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how you just kind of slowly, yeah, mm -hmm. start doing that kind of stuff. What, what's, so, what are some things like, I mean, we're here at La Ferme de Quatre Temps, which is so different than the way you and I both farm. What, what's, what are some things that like you've seen here that are going to inspire you back on your farm? Um, I think just the level of organization and really planning out your days. Um, I think sometimes, like I do a lot of planning, but I think sometimes I'm not planning far enough ahead. Like I really have to think about like the year long plan and the, you know, even the three and the five, like yeah. where I'm actually going with this. I think mm -hmm. that's really important. Yeah. 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 Um, are there things like that you've seen with like stuff, specific stuff, like with crops and stuff that you're going to change? Like is your... Is your, what you're marketing right now, is, are you happy with that? Are those things that you want to change? Um, I, I think I'm happy with where they're at right now. I don't think that it's actually going to, you know, stay the same. It is very dynamic. Um, 
but I think like I, I like selling to restaurants right now and that is working well although I'm learning that there is like you know probably some that I should drop where I'm spending way too much energy on that's not you know giving me much of a return yeah um, I really enjoy our farmers market I love connecting with people so mm -hmm. you know building community especially where I live is really important to me um, I do see selling to grocery stores as an option that's going to be in the near future. Like, I've already been approached, it's just I don't have the GAP certification, which is something that we need. Are they, are they, so they're asking for that? They're asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see going that way. Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. You think, do you think that's going to simplify? Are you trying, are you kind of out of place now? Because how many years has it been? Well, I'm, four or five years? No, I'm starting my seventh year. This is your seventh year. Holy yeah. crap. Carrie and I met back in, in Calgary. I think it was like the one of the first workshops I ever taught was yeah. there, and you like and you were there. Yeah, and you started right then. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. it was interesting because I was um, so I used to be an electrician, and I had electrical contracting business. And when I had met you at that course, I had sold my business, took a leap of faith. Everyone thought I was losing my mind because I was just <laughs> had it. So I was done with it. You know, kind of throwing everything away to start over, and I had been taking um, permaculture workshops for almost a year because I was like determined that it was like I was going to find something there I could make money at but that was in line with my values right? yeah so so I came and took your course and I didn't even know what the hell spin farming was like and, I had no clue yeah and and <laughs> was it was it per, were you doing permaculture stuff with Rob Avis yeah okay yeah. so you you know the whole verge scene and then Rob yeah. brought me there yeah. brought me there okay wow yeah. um and then it was like I remember that feeling because it was like you are giving your slideshow and I was kind of like, you know, drinking my coffee, you know, like chatting with everybody and all of a sudden I was just like, oh, holy crap, like this is it, I can yeah. really do this. Wow. Yeah, wow. What's different about, like, let's, I, I'm curious on what your first couple years were like getting started and then kind of fast forward to where you are now, like what, <laughs> was, was it the typical just like grinding and? Oh, it was just, uh, it seems so chaotic now when I think back to it because I, at the time I was a single mom with two kids yeah. and you know, it was, it was super intense and Jeez. I just like took on way too much and, but I mean, I had the energy for it so I was able to push through but yeah, I think there was definitely times when I was like, no way, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I just, it's too hard, I can't do this. But then I'd look back at, okay, so if I don't do this, I gotta go back to being an electrician. And, you know, I knew that I, like, I didn't want that so bad. So then that, okay, give me a little bit more fuel to push forward. And, yeah. But then it was about year four when I was like, started to get into a rhythm and figure it out. And, and that's when things started to go a little more smoothly. How old was your youngest when you started? Oh, like, kid. just born, like not even one. <sighs> I, so I had him like in oh, his car seat wow. in the garden with me. And I remember those pictures. I loved those pictures. Oh my God. That was like, that is so hardcore. Like I thought I was hardcore. Now I'm, I'm a parent now and I'm like, how the hell would you do this? Holy crap. That was that just yeah. been just intense. It was. Like, Holy crap. Okay. I gotta reflect on it a little bit because I kind of forget like yeah. those days, how hard they were. Because yeah. now, he's, now he's seven and he has a bike and he just bikes along with us. And, yeah. You know, it's so much easier to handle. But, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And okay, so, but I mean, okay, so besides from that, which is obviously the biggest thing, you know, you had yeah. had your, your, your second kid and starting the business, but what were some things, like, were you just kind of trying whatever back then, trying whatever crops and... Yeah, basically, like I was um, following a lot of Wally's books, right? Yeah. Because those were that's what was available at the time. Yeah. So I was like, I wasn't planting, you know, like really long. You weren't doing crops. potatoes and no, winter squash. No, but I was fighting with that, like because in Saskatchewan, a garden is like potatoes, it's corn, it's all these things, and so when I was going into other people's spaces. It was there was so much pressure from them and I wasn't confident enough to be like, no, I'm farming like this. So right. Often I get talked into growing stuff because they liked it and yeah. you know, that whole. So right. Like, so you got a lot influenced by them and yeah, that kind yeah. of. Yeah. It was just my own like insecurities not knowing what I was doing. But right. I mean, now it's like I even take them out to my gardens like this is what it's going to look like. So and, uh, you know, I follow your um, land agreement thing, too, because I think it's important to like really lay it out like set up expectations this is what it's going to look like so yeah. if it's a good fit you know awesome but if it's not that's okay right yeah. so how many plots do you do you have now uh, i have 10. and how big are they on average um uh, most of them are about a thousand square feet okay i have um, purchased like an empty lot that's just a half a block from my house oh nice yeah and it's like a 33 by 100 foot lot so that's kind of your home base yeah oh that's yeah. cool so i have a shed on there and then like the washing and um, post harvestation is all at my house which is like they're connected by an alley, so it's half a block away. Okay, okay. Yeah. And 
So that that came later. Oh yeah, like that way was just later. like I've only farmed that. Like I bought it in the fall two years ago. So we farmed it for one full season, and now you know it's planted again. So I mean, after all these years, is it, do you do you still like being urban? Because I've often asked myself that. Yeah, you know, like, like I go back and forth, honestly. Like I ten because ten plots is a lot. Like that's a yeah, lot of moving around. It is. Yeah, yeah. And, and I do find that challenging. And I mean, I'm always like trying to come up with new ideas to get them closer to my house and bigger and stuff. But I mean, there is obviously advantages. Like my kids are in school. I think uprooting them and, and starting over on a farm right now is just not a good time. Yeah. And I think the whole idea of actually starting from scratch again. Uh, yeah, you know, knowing, what, knowing that you've gone through it. And... Yeah, when things are like going so well now. So yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think that I would enjoy being out of the city. But at the same time, I kind of like what I have established and the marketing's really easy and, yeah. you know, I've really made my na a name for myself there and I think that if I was to move out, it's going to change the, the dynamic of things a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if this is where I'm def like, you know, if I'm going to stay here in the city, but for right now, I think it's the best option. Yeah. And what's... So I mean we're in the we're in the middle of your season right now. You've taken yeah. a week off to come here. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's big. What what are you thinking going forward? What what's going to be what's Green Sister Gardens going to look like next year? Um I think uh well I have a really amazing gal that's working with me right now and uh we've had some conversations and she wants to stay on, you know, for the next year, which is huge, right? Yes. When you have that continuity. So I think that it's going to be, um, you know, a lot of training for her this year and then being able to give her a little bit more responsibility next year. Yeah. Because I think what I'd ultimately like to do is be able to work a little bit more on the business rather than yes, in it. Yes, of not, course. Not fully. I like being in the dirt and everything, but I think that I can make it a lot more efficient and, yeah. and change a lot of things if I had a little bit more time to yeah. do some of that. Yeah. So even if that means like maybe hiring a part-time person to work with her full-time, yeah. I think it would be valuable for me to just step back and, totally. and do some management style stuff. That sounds like a good plan. I can tell you for sure that would, that's yeah. a good idea. And sometimes that involves taking a bit of risk because that's yeah. money. Yeah, that exactly. stuff costs money, you know, yeah. but no, that sounds like a great idea. Well, that's awesome, Carrie. I'm going to leave links to uh, Carrie's stuff for social media, her website down below so you guys can check that out in the show notes and uh thanks for spending the time carrie cool. yeah all right awesome. okay thanks for watching guys if you want to see more stuff like this if you want to hear from other types of farmers let me know in the comments i try to make videos as often as i can based on your guys's comments and i really appreciate your feedback so subscribe to the channel if you haven't hit that notifications button to get notified when i do a video and please share and like these videos. It helps in the analytics so more people see them. All right, talk to you later.